In this quick video, we're going to test and tear down a 3-pack Xsense wireless interlink photoelectric battery-powered smoke alarm. Let's see how they work and see how they're constructed. Today I've got a 3-pack of smoke alarms from Xsense to try out. These are battery-powered and uh, they're photoelectric. Photoelectric, so not an ionizing type. It doesn't have any radioactive material in it. These ones are better for I think these ones are better for smoldering fires if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, these are there's three of them, they're linked together, they're wireless, and you know what? You can't have too many smoke detectors in your house as far as I'm concerned. I've got two now and I'm gonna be putting three more up in bedrooms and maybe even one in the workshop here. Because you never know if a fire breaks out. I got one on the ground floor. I've got a photoelectric combination, a hardwired combination photoelectric detector, as well as um, as well as uh, carbon monoxide on the ground floor. And I've got a, an ionizing at the top of the stairs, but uh, they don't do you much good if you have a fire that breaks out, say, in a bedroom. So one of these is going to go in my son's room because if there's a fire that's going to break out, it's, chances are going to be in that disaster that's his bedroom. Anyway, there's three of them in the pack. So let's just get these activated. They all are powered with a lithium battery, which means it should be good for many years. And they will beep when the battery needs to be replaced, for sure. Uh, to activate them, here's the lithium battery in them. It's a just a standard CR123, I think that's what this one is. Yeah, CR123A. And to activate it, we just have to pull the little tab out. And activate the, the, the alarm. It has a little tab there to aid in removing the battery if you have trouble pulling the battery out to change it. But we're going to just remove the little tab here, the little insulator that protects the, the negative terminal to stop it from discharging the battery before it's shipped. So we're just going to remove the batteries and activate the three alarms and then um, I got tested. And what I'll do is I'm going to start a fire. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I'm actually going to start a fire and see that they all go off. I'm going to do it safely, obviously. Uh, test button on here. Should be able to just push the test button and they should all. I guess I got to push and hold it. There we go. So they're all beeping. You can see the lights flashing on them. As long as I push the test button, and then the others will should stop automatically. So if I test each one of them by pushing the test button, it'll beep, and then the others will all start beeping too. Same with this one here. Okay, so um, we're ready to test. I'm gonna get something that I can ignite and create some smoke. So to do this test, I'm gonna create a fire in a bottle and extinguish it, get some smoke coming off the bottle, and the smoke detector should go off. So we'll just light the fire. There we go. Get the fire going, let some smoke build up. Okay, now we got smoke. There you go. Answer your question. We'll clear the smoke out of here. Shut this thing off. Man, it's pretty sensitive. So we know they work. 
didn't take them that long to go off either. It'll create a bit more smoke here and just do it again. And I'm going to take one of these apart so we can see what's inside it. Since these are a photoelectric design, there's no harmful radioactive materials in, in these ones. Get some smoke filling up in the bottle there. Okay, here's some smoke. Smoke detector. They take a few seconds to respond. The other ones go off as well. The other ones you can see are beeping as well. Got to get the smoke clear to stop them from going off. Okay, I think that uh, answers that question, that they certainly work as advertised. Let me get rid of this smoke-filled bottle before I set everything off again out here in the workshop. And then we'll take this unit apart. Okay, first I'll remove the battery. And it just has three small Phillips screws holding it shut, so let's just pop it apart. And we'll take a look at the the actual sensor. Okay, this entire unit should just pop out. I think it should pop out somehow. Probably held in place with little clips I have to release. Oh, it just falls out like that. Okay, so there, that's the unit itself. This is obviously the radio board that interfaces with the other units themselves. This is the smoke sensing chamber, and basically how this works is smoke enters the chamber. There's a, a an LED that pulses. Usually it's a, like a little laser. I can pop the top off here they should open up quite easy if I unplug this does this unplug maybe it doesn't the piezo probably doesn't unplug but these tops usually come off pretty easy on these things because they're not designed to be airtight or anything so this is the sensing chamber and what we've got in here is we've got an LED and we've got a detector and when it's powered up if I put power to this unit positive terminal over here it's marked with a plus I put power to the unit, the LED itself will blink and it will blink at a, a specific rate. Now it's going to be an infrared LED guaranteed. So if I put my camera in night shot mode, we should see this thing flashing. So let's just do that. So what will happen is at a regular interval, and it's not constant obviously because the, there we go, I just saw it there. You'll see every so often this little light is going to flash. You'll see a little blink every so often. There, see, there's another one. So every, how many seconds? Let's time it. So about every nine seconds? Or 10 seconds, or one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, 
every nine seconds or so it looks like it's going to blink. And what it does is when it's blinking, it's firing a beam of light into this chamber. Now, as long as the beam of light does not reach the detector over here, which it probably will with the, with the, uh, with the cover off, letting light in, I'm probably going to create errors, but how it works is when smoke enters this chamber through these little slots in the side here, let me turn off the night shot. How this works is the way that these little channels are directed, anything that goes past, smoke that's going past through the screens on the side here are going to enter the chamber and the, just the angles on these are going to direct the smoke to swirl around inside this area here. And the smoke will cause a refraction of the light. Normally the light from the LED can never make it to the detector. Never can make it there because of the way it's angled. The light is going to go straight this way and the LED or the detector is looking this way. But when smoke or something gets in the way and causes the LED to reflect, normally this is in total darkness, right? Normally this, there's no light at all in here because this cover is keeping the detector and the LED isolated from each other. Right, you can see the channel here. The LED shines out through here and it shines out just through a very narrow opening right in the end there and then the detector here is also covered up most of the way with just a very narrow opening. So how these work is when smoke shines or smoke gets into the detection chamber it causes the light to scatter. So the light beam is now reaching the detector down on this side and when it detects that uh, there's smoke it sets off the alarm. That in a nutshell is how photoelectric smoke detectors work. So the basic smoke detectors you should have in your house, well you should have both types. It's, it's because they they work on different types of fires. Fast burning fires are more detected by, are quicker detected by ionization and smoldering fires are detected quicker by photoelectric. I believe that was what it was. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but in the end everybody should have both types of smoke detectors in their house. You know, for, for the sake of what the cost of them is, uh, you know, the, you, we wouldn't have people dying in ho house fires if everybody had a working smoke detector. I mean, that is the fact. That's the t statistics, is whenever you hear on the news that there was a fatal house fire, every time it was, you hear on the news, you know, the fire chief said they didn't have any working smoke detectors. So everybody needs to have a smoke detector, a minimum of one on every floor of their house, preferably both photoelectric and ionization types, and preferably one in every sleeping area, especially if you sleep with the doors closed, because it can save your life. You know, fire starts in one room that's closed off from the rest of the house, at least you've got an earlier warning than waiting for the fire to burn through the door and set off the smoke detector in the hall. So that's it. That's about all I have to say on this one. Um, so I got these to show off and I've now shown them off. Okay, now I'm just going to put it back together and make sure that it works. Oh, it looks like there's a little tamper switch on here too. I guess that tells it when the battery's out. That's what that does. It's a little switch that gets held down and the battery's in place. It holds down this little, there's a little switch there and it holds down onto a contact here. It holds a little spring down onto a contact is what that does. Anyway, time to put this back together and make sure it still works before I put it into service. It goes together like this. Positive side battery, negative side battery. Yeah. Just like that.
10 years is the life. So this replace the device within 10 years of the date of installation. So you mark down when you put them in and uh, after 10 years you replace them. Test button. And then the other two are going off. So everything's working. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.